Hello everybody and welcome to a very special episode of the RDL Show. Why is this special? Because it's season two, baby. I know we're a little late on this one, but this started out as a full power ranking video. But Indecisive Ronin kept changing his mind. So Boss Ronin had to step in and fix things. Now, we're doing more of a full preview of the season and teams with maybe a little power ranking at the end. The Regal Draft League has evolved. For season two, we now have 20, yes, 20 coaches split across two leagues. I'll mostly be covering the Wi-Fi League since that's where the Woobats will be playing. But time permitting, I will try my best to throw in some coverage of the Showdown League as long as it doesn't feel too out of place. So, with the expansion, we have a lot of new coaches. For the Wi-Fi League, besides the Woobats, we have two more returning teams. Starstreak and the Blazing Brelooms, TCL and the New York Latios. And two more returning coaches who have brought brand new teams into the league. Tommy has bid farewell to the Denver Darkrai and embraced last season's heroic Lucky Bird and returned with the Alaskan Articunos. Last season's championship title wasn't enough for Chairman Otter, so he has ditched the Orlando Oshawats in favour of the San Diego Skeleturge. We have half the league made up of familiar faces, which brings us the excitement of five brand new coaches, five new challenges for our returnees, five new opportunities to steal content every week for me. Let's now take a look at each of the teams in a bit of detail. I will be doing a full video going over my team, so unfortunately, I won't do that here. Shameless content plug, I'll add it into the description below. Starting at the beginning with the Alaskan Articunos, coached by Tommy, who finished fourth in season one with the Denver Dark Ride. And continuing last season's snowy theme and embracing the cold of their homeland with pick number one, they took back Scalabar. However, the rest of the picks didn't go down the snow route, instead building a rather scary looking sun core with Iron Moth, Brute Bonnet and Thunderous Incarnate, throwing great supports in Milotic and Star Raptor, and that six is terrifying enough. Dommy didn't stop there. He added a trick room mode with Conkelda and Gotharida, making this a very, very difficult team to prepare for. Going over some of the individual mons, let's start with what I think is the glue that will be holding this team together. Thunderous Incarnate. 13 points might seem like a lot to spend on a prankster mon that doesn't have the greatest support toolkit. But take a look at that limited toolkit. Scary Face, Rain Dance, Sunny Day, Eerie Impulse, Electric Terrain, Taunt, Thunder Wave. Single Target Speed Control, Weather Control, Terrain Control, Special Damage Reduction, and Disruption. It might not be as diverse as some other Prankster Mons, but it is incredibly powerful. With these specific tools, Thundy is almost the perfect support for Iron Moth and Baxcalibur. Yes, he doesn't get Snowscape to be perfect for Bax, but Rain Dance is still phenomenal Baxcalibur, since while Thermal Exchange grants a plus one attack boost from being hit by fire attacks, it doesn't make Bax immune to them. So reducing their power is so beneficial. Now, as I discovered last season, Bax 
Max is also in kind of a weird speed tier where it can outspeed a lot of things, but it still gets outsped by a lot too. So single target speed control, like Thunder Wave or Scary Face, if you don't want to risk missing, is a great alternative to Tailwind and amazing into the Tailwind mirror to help Bax move first. Bax itself is a very, very versatile and powerful piece to build a team around. It gets a good coverage pool, is surprisingly bulky and has several setup options, allowing it to be built in a different way with almost a different role every week. It's an amazing pickup for 12 points. Speaking of great pickups, at 10 points, Iron Moth is absolutely insane value. It doesn't have great coverage pool, but it gets the coverage you need. It's super fast, has an insane special attack stat. Combine this with Thundy Speed Control, Electric Terrain, and Sunny Day, and you have the ability to create your very own futuristic Mothra. And that's bloody terrifying. Malodic is an amazing foil for Baxcalibur. The reggae competitive team I've done pretty well with uses this. And I really, really wanted to draft it for myself. Bax hates being intimidated. So having a bulky as all hell competitive mod next to it is phenomenal protection. Especially if you're not going the setup route on Bax. Because if that competitive mon is Milotic, you can then start going for coils, making it even bulkier and letting it use super accurate hypnosis. Putting the things that can hurt backs to sleep. It's like some kind of Godzilla Nessie super monster team up and we're their food. Staraptor is an interesting pick. To some, Staraptor is, is just too frail. It is a pretty fast Intimidator with access to Tailwind, U-Turn, and if you need it to ensure setup, Final Gambit. I honestly think it's great value at five points. Prehistoric Amoongus. In draft, this is a scary, scary Pokemon. Because of the natural bulk, you can EV this thing with a bunch of speed. At max speed, it hits 170, meaning it can outspeed Genies in Tailwind and base 100s with just an Icy Wind. That's crazy. This thing chucking out spores in Tailwind is scary enough. Add in a boost of energy or sun into attack and it'll put out some pretty respectable damage. In normal VGC, this is a completely forgotten Pokemon. But draft, it's so so good and great value at 10 points overall this is an incredible team the only pick from the whole squad i'm not sold on is iron trouts i think there was better value to be had with those six points but that could be my standard vgc brain not seeing what treads brings to the table really really well put together squad that I think will be there or thereabouts at the end of the season. 8 out of 10. Next up, we have one of the new teams. The Albuquerque Appleton, coached by Weeze. Who opened up their draft by taking Dojo Tatsu. Now, I struggled to find a way of using the Fishy Duo last season. But if Weeze can find a way, that's a terrifying prospect. As a squad, this seems to be a take on the 222 concept that's been taken off in regular VGC. And as my week one opponent, I can tell you, it's a bloody nightmare to prep for. It's got four main cores Dogma Tatsu, Annihilate plus Sneasel or Dug Trio, Colossal plus Sneasel, Indeed the Armor Rouge. Then you have Speed Control. Tonalistarian, and pranks to support with Klefki. It's actually tough to pick out the key mons in this squad. It's pretty well balanced. Dozotatsu doesn't need speed control from Torn. Indeed, the Armor Rouge 
has built-in speed control with Trick Room. Pranks to screens plus weather is a nice to have, but not necessary for any of the tools to work. But having those in prep means you have to respect them. And that makes prep for the rest of the team really, really difficult. So what I think the really big mon for this squad is, is actually Sneasel. It's faster than you think. It's way harder than you expect. And has a lot of tools that you have to prep for and attempt to predict in the battle. This thing is an utter menace and it fits perfectly onto this team since it can be brought no matter what cause you have. At two points, this was an absolute bargain. It does kind of need Sash if you're running fake out, but I'm sure there's a way to make a super bulky Eviolite support set for it. Since we covered Sneasel, let's cover it's what I think is going to be its main dive buddy, Annihilate. Annihilate is such an oppressive mod. It's very, very strong, and you can't get rid of Rage Fist stacks. Once it has them, they're there for the entire battle. So, one beat up, and that 250 base power Rage Fist is knocking out almost anything it attacks with only a couple of ways to mitigate it if you're prepping for this team you absolutely have to have multiple annihilate answers when i was putting together cost tiers I, I thought 12 points way too cheap for annihilate it's insane but digging a bit deeper 12 points is actually a pretty fair price to pay since there are answers to it and it does kind of get shut down with a burn so you're almost forced to terrify her or make sure that the wisp mon is dead before it hits the field and i think doug trio is actually a really really cool pick it's way faster than i thought it was and it gets rock blast to boost the ape it also gets Bulldoze or Rock Tomb for speed control. Sucker Punch for priority. And that Arena Trap ability will really, really mess up some strategies. Everyone knows what Dozo Tatsu does. Now, unless you've been living under a rock for the last year, you have to find an answer to it in your squad. And then you have to position that answer correctly. It's easier said than done. Just having Haze is not enough. You still need to make sure that that Mon lives long enough to use the move. Or the Bozo gonna sweep. This is probably the scariest of the three twos. Who's gonna set the Trick Room? Are they even going to set Trick Room? Is Armour's Life Orb, Weakness Policy, some other random item? This duo has so many options and it's impossible to prep for them all. Yes, a dark type is immune to expanding force. But then the armorers could have Aura Sphere to get rid of that dark type and go right back to expanding force spam if you haven't got rid of the terrain. I honestly think this is a really, really well put together team. But I'm not entirely sure how well Dozo Tatsu will work in draft. I couldn't game plan well enough to use it. But... I'm not the best VGC player, so I could easily have missed something. And even outside of the fish, this team has a lot of tools and is very, very dangerous. If a little predictable. 7 out of 10. Back once again to the Breloom Master. Another returning team with the Blazing Breloom's. There was talk of Starstreak, aka Breloom Boy, aka Rain Runner, making the move to a different team this season. But those rumours never came to fruition. So the angry, punchy shrooms are back for another round. And this time, they mean business. 
This is a great team. You have an amazing rain call with Politoed, Basque Legion and Thunderous T. Rillaboom, Gothtel, Volby. Phenomenal support squad. Arbok is a really underrated intimidator. And Infernape offers great utility. Is it a little one-dimensional? Yes. Is it good at what it does? You're damn right it is. The rain core is probably the star of this show. But those supports, in my opinion, are the most important pieces of the team. The most expensive mon on the team, for good reason. Rilla offers so much flexibility in how this team can be played. You can make it super bulky support with fake out, knock off, taunt. You can make it hit like an absolute truck. Or you can make it somewhere in the middle. Hell, you can even make it a setup sweeper with sword stance. Trust me, I'm trying. It's a freaking awesome set. Even though the drummer eight probably won't let you, don't sleep on Rilla and expect the unexpected. 10 points for Gothtel is an absolute steal, in my opinion. Yes, it can run Shadow Tag and prevent you switching out, letting Polito perish song, blah, 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 blah. But it can also run competitive and start one-shotting things. It's a phenomenal support one with fake out, taunt, Thunderwave, screens, the list goes on. I will make this cost more next season. Pranks the bug. There's one huge problem with the pranks the bug. They are super, super frail. The pranks the support they offer is absolutely incredible, but you've got to keep them safe. Pranks are on call, it's broken. It's really really hard to play around and it's super disruptive but if you absolutely need to get tailwind prankster can't be stopped without a prankster taunt add to that a taunt of its own weather t-wave and tail glow baton pass shenanigans and you have a frail mon that if you don't deal with it will absolutely cause you downfall now, I don't need to spend much time on the ring. Politoed is a good support Pokemon that, as I discovered in the Kitakam prologue, can get KOs if you play it correctly. Weather Ball is a great move that, even if they take away your weather, it'll still do a ton of damage. If the sun's up, Weather Ball becomes a fire move. It's another Encore Mon. It's got Perish, it's got Haze, it's got Helping Hand. Helping Hand with just about anything from Life or Basque Legion is going to destroy stuff in the rain, unless it's resisted. I do not care what you are. You throw Volt Absorb Thundy into the mix, and this core is going to be tough to stop. The other two mons on this squad, I don't quite understand. Fortress at two points and Green at one. They're, they're not breaking the bank. And Starstreak says he has some heat planned for them. So I'm not going to bash on them. But to me, I think there are probably Mons in those tiers that would have fit the team a little better. So I wait with bated breath to be proven wrong. Overall, this is a squad that will be amazing at what it says it does, which is pretty key for a VGC team. Issue that I see is where's the plan B? The main core is strong enough that it'll win a ton of games though. So seven out of ten. The prehistoric birdie has arrived in the present. I'll butcher the pronunciation. So I'll just call you Coach C, okay? Deal by whiskey, Coach C is bringing so many VGC relics back to life. Honestly, this squad is insane. I have no idea what to say or how to read this team. It's got a pretty good stunroom core of Ferrigarath, Torkoal and Skeleturge. But beyond that, it's a collection of decent Pokemon. That 
If Coach C can put them together, it could be a really good, tough to beat team. Let's start with the giraffe. Frigoraph is a great Pokemon. People say it's expensive at 11 points, but the ability to prevent priority is so, so powerful. Throw in Trick Room, Setup, Stab Hyper Voice. It's a fantastic, versatile Pokemon that I think, personally, is undervalued at 11. The Croc is really, really underrated. Otter used it to great effect last season, and I really wanted it as my Intimidator this season. But, alas, Coach C grabbed it before me. Amazing pickup at 8 points. This Mon is incredible in draft. It's tough to prep for because it's got so many options. It can be a support, physical, or special attacker. In normal VGC, where it's crushed by so many things in the meta, it's difficult to put on a team. But in draft, where you've usually only got to deal with those threats one at a time and once every season, this thing's a force to be reckoned with. Speaking of Monza borderline unusable in standard VGC, Skeledurge in draft is going to be a monster. Before the season, we played a Mono Ghost Halloween special, and this thing was absolutely brutal. Yes, it's slow, but with Yawn, Wisp, Encore, Helping Hand, it can be a really slow, bulky as hell support and with a base 110 special attack and a signature move that raises that special attack by one every time it's used it can quickly get out of hand as a trick room sweeper i was really shocked to see it go round one but this is a good pokemon take those four throw in toxicroak as a first tail fake out one noivern for fast tailwind Breloom for fast spore this has the tools to be a good team. I'm just not sure how you put the pieces of the puzzle together. So for me, 6 out of 10. The Latios are swooping into Season 2, riding high on the winds of winning the Season 1 grudge bracket. But TCL is pushing hard for the big trophy this time around. Season 2, they have the number 2 pick. But once again, they picked... Fluttermane, round one. Look at this squad. It's an absolute monster. Fluttermane, Erpaluna, Scizor, Gudra, Fireball. That's a very, very strong team right there. I want to talk about the supports rather than the big guns. Starting with the one I think a lot of people will overlook. This is one of the best Trick Room setters you can get. 95, 80, 110 is good enough bulk to live a lot of hits. Oblivious means it can't be taunted. 100 special attack is good enough to chunk things. And with 30 speed, it's slow enough to do stuff in the Trick Room it's just set. If you want to make sure you get up Trick Room, just chuck a Covert Cloak on it. And you're as good as guarantee a turn 1 TR. Or you can run a damage boosting item and guarantee it turn two. Chilly Reception is really good for pivoting and taking away weather in one go. Yawn, Heal Pulse, Icy Wind for good support. So it's a bit slow, so you'll have to play around that. I honestly love this Mon and I wish I'd gone for it. Next up, we have one of the best value Tailwind setters in the draft. It's fast. You can either run it with competitive as an anti-stat drop mon, or you can run it with wind power. So once it's set its own tailwind, the electric move on the following turn is probably going to KO whatever it hits. Sure, it's probably a sash hog to make sure it gets that tailwind up, but at six points, this thing was a bargain. There are only three faster fake outs in the game than Alolan Persian. And I think only Weavile gets close 
to the support toolkit that Persian gets. The combination of fake out, icy wind, taunt, parting shot, coming off base 115 speed is insane. Overall, I think this is probably my favorite team in the league. Is it the best team in the league? I'm not sure, but it's absolutely up there. It's got so many tools and is really, really well balanced. I don't think there's a bad pick on this team. I don't like giving out 10s. So for now, I'm giving it a nine. But honestly, this could easily be a 10 for me. Crashing out of the doghouse and into the throne room, we have Twimbley and the Ohio City Doggies. And they're bringing an angry as hell pack of wild animals with them. Two stupidly strong bears, a thawed toothed snow leopard, and a damn cat genie. Seriously, how did we let them get Ensaluna, Urshifu, Shen Pao, and Landorus, along with Poltergeist, Oranguru, and Pelipan? I don't know where to start with this squad. There are so many threats. So let's take a look at some of the great supports. Poltergeist might not get Machigotcha, but it still has hospitality. Trip Room, Life Dew, Scald, Giga Drain. With Eviolite, it's bulky and hard to remove. So it can rotate in, healing up its teammates. Just sit there, spamming Scalds till it gets a burn. It can even set up with Nasty Plot or Calm Mind. Super, super annoying to think about. And I'm absolutely making sure this is higher up the tier list next season. Okay, so with the first thing that comes to mind with Oranguru is the instruct nonsense. But it can't be faked out. It gets Encore, Yawn, Taunt, and Stab Hyper Voice. It doesn't have a great deal of coverage. But it's so annoying to deal with next to a super strong attacker like Blood Moon and Urshifu. Where do you target? Which do you remove first? If you ignore Oranguru, it's just going to keep instructing. And you're just going to keep hit, getting hit with two Blood Moons, two sets of Surgeon Strikes, two Rock Slides. You need to have an answer to this thing in your prep. Or it's going to indirectly decimate you. Now, you might be thinking... Why on earth would I put Trudel on this list? Well, Trudel has Prankster. And I do love me some Prankster support. One point for Prankster Mon. It gets Taunt, Encore, and Parting Shot. Damn, damn good value. Everyone will focus on the crazy six of Urshifu, Shenpao, Pelipper, Ursaluna, Oranguru. Landorus. But the value that Twim managed to get out of the remaining points is crazy. This is absolutely up there with the strongest teams in the league this season. It's another 9 out of 10. Bringing the rain from the city of brotherly love, we have Chris and the Philadelphia Politos. I think this might have been the curse pick one again. And this season, Said pick one also caused a ton of controversy. With Chris's pick of Ogre Pond Wellspring, we found out that we were only allowing one Ogre Pond form in the league. So by picking Wellspring, Chris locked the other three out for the rest of the league. I'm just going to jump straight into it. Starting with Glyscore. Every time I face Glyscore, it just doesn't do anything. So I don't know what it's going to be like in draft. If you were around while we were doing the tiering and points assignment, you know I like the hypercutter ability. It makes it immune to intimidate. But everyone seems to run poison orb, 
Poison Heal with Terra Normal Facade. I don't like that, personally. It's just easy to shut down. It's got good enough coverage. It's got access to Tailwind, making it pretty decent value at 8 points. Cinderace is good value at 5 points. I mean, Ted absolutely destroyed me with it last season, so I can't hate on it too much. I've just always found it quite underwhelming whenever I've seen it outside of that one match. Barrow Scooter has a really, really cool ability in Propeller Tail, which stops its attacks being redirected. But man, it's the frailest thing I have ever, ever seen. With Swift Swim and a good attack stat, it's going to hurt. It's going to get KOs. But it's also going to be a Sash Hog. Triagonal, decent cheap support with Screens, Haze and Icy Wind. Hypno, <laughs> Hypno. Chris says he's got some fire tech planned with Hypno, so I'm going to look forward to that. Overall, Water Ogre was an incredible first pick. It's such a strong, versatile Pokemon. It can fill so many different roles, making it really splashable. Hans is always in the conversation for best Mon in the game. Goldengo is so, so powerful. Salamence offers so much utility as a support of power because, let's not forget, it's a pseudo-legendary. I can't say this is not a good team because most of the Mons are really good. But outside of those four, I'm not sure how this squad fits together. I like a lot of the Mons. I've just got too many questions outside of that big four. So, 7 out of 10. Weens has dragged the piss up from the frozen depths to join the ranks of the Regal Draft League. And actually, on that card is a really, really well-balanced team. King Gambit, Sinister, Monkey Dory. That's a great, great core. Typhlosion really popped off at times last season and can enable Lava Plume body press nonsense with Dash Bun. But I want to start with a Mon that I took a really long, hard look at pre-draft in Iron Thorns. In regular VGC, its speed tier has, in my opinion, always held it back. It's not fast enough for Tailwind, and it's not slow enough to really be a Trick Room Sweeper. But in Draft, where it probably can get off a Dragon Dance, where its coverage is really valued, this thing could be an absolute monster. I came so close to drafting it for myself. Great, great pickup, eight points. Another good setup, Mon, that can really steamroll if you leave it unchecked, is Reverend. Yes, it's got a four times weakness to ground, but that doesn't necessarily hold it back in draft. It's not got the best coverage, but it's good at what it does. And it's got some really nice support tech with Taunt, Parting Shot, and Haze. I kind of like the Flareon pick. I've never really paid it much attention, but it gets some pretty nice tech. Flashfire makes it a good pivot. Flame Charge to boost its speed. Sure, like Reverum, it doesn't get the best coverage, but then it gets things like Yawn, Will O Wisp, Scary Face, with Tom Pass. Honestly, at two points, this thing is great. Cloud Nine, Tailwind, Haze. Decent coverage. What's not to like? Altaria is a decent mon. I honestly wish it had got a better flying move than Hurricane. But the support tech it's got is awesome. And it fits so well on this squad. Another pick I really, really love. Overall, I like this team. I think Weens is going to pull off some really nice surprises with it. It's not got the big flashy mons like a lot of the other team. But I have to say, it's really, really solid. And I 
can't wait to see what it gets done this season. Easy 7 out of 10. Last, but certainly not least, Chairman Otter has gone east to west, leaving Orlando for San Diego and swapping starters from Otter to Croc. This squad is equal parts scary and confusing, but Otter is a bit of a mad scientist, so I'm not doubting the choices at all. Roaring Moon, Heatran, Sylveon. Amazing. We all know what Lava Frog and Ribbon Cat are going to do. Moon Low is one of the most versatile mons ever. With booster energy speed, there are very, very few things that will outspeed it. And it being part dark type means it cannot be prankster taunted. So you're almost always getting up Tailwind. Throw in Breaking Swipe and Knock Off and you've got an absolute menace. Knowing Otter though, he's absolutely never bringing a standard moon set. Serena is a really interesting pick and a really interesting Pokemon. Queenly Majesty is a great ability and it's got decent bulk and a good attack staff. Knock Off, Acrobatics, Play Rough, okay coverage moves. And it gets screens. I looked at it a lot, but it just seemed a bit meh. I just wished it got better coverage or more support tools. It's decent at both, but not great at either, which hurts it in my opinion. It's more than capable of popping off and stomping a team though, so you absolutely cannot ignore it. After my bold statement in Discord, I feel like I've got to talk about Lax here. And I know Otter is absolutely going to sweep me with this thing when we play. But I honestly think Lax is just a bit mid. I saw so many Snorlaxes after the DLC dropped. So many YouTubers were praising this thing like it was the second coming or something. But I honestly never found it particularly difficult to deal with. Without the belly drum boost, it just doesn't put on any pressure and because it needs redirection support if you can take away the belly drum boost the board just isn't threatening i'm pretty sure this is going to be my pin church in of season two a mon that i slate pre-season that goes on to be an mvp candidate and i can't wait to see what Otter does with it but for me there's so many better mons in that eight point bracket I'm probably in the minority and I'll probably get some heat for this. But Lax just ain't it. It ain't the threat that I keep hearing it is. Now, on this one, I will do that ever so rare thing of admitting I was wrong. Mark your calendars, people. Ronin admitted he was wrong. Yes, Clefairy is better than Clefable. But with unaware, this thing is going to be so irritating to get off the field. It's already bulky enough to take hits. Add in that ability, and people are really going to hate facing this thing. The support move pool is really, really good. The coverage is good. I very much underestimated this thing and dropped the ball, leaving it at five points. That was an absolute bargain for Otter. I know for a fact I'm not seeing Otter's vision here. And there's something I'm missing. There's going to be one little piece that no one sees that makes this thing an absolute nightmare for the league. But even without seeing that, it's a really, really solid squad that I know is going to end up doing great things this season. But without seeing that detail that I'm missing, I can't put my amongst the top teams. So, 7 out of 10. Like I said, I'm not going to go over my team here. When my draft review goes live, I will link it in the description. But for consistency and comparison, I give my own team a 7 out of 10. I think it's balanced. It's got some tech. But it's far from the best teams in the league. We will pick up some wins. We will get stomped by some teams. We're right in the middle of the pack. And 
to be honest, I like it there. I feel like I've really gone all out on the supports in this video, but I think most people forget about the lower cost support ones. So I wanted to bring some attention to some of the really, really cool pickups people made with their lower cost mons. The supports in particular. I am so excited for the season. I think everyone has drafted amazing teams and there are absolutely no easy matches for anyone this season. I was planning on doing another power rankings, but it was so hard to rank these teams. So I've given them a score instead to give you, my discerning viewers, some indication on how good I think each team was without the constant changing of mind that the rankings was causing. Let me know what you think in the comments. Do you agree, disagree with my takes on the Mons and teams? Remember, please be respectful. If you want to be part of the crowd for Season 2 and maybe be a coach for Season 3, join the Discord, also linked below, and I shall see you all in the next one.